Well, hello everybody. My name is Mark and today I will be showing you guys how to create a fully procedural canyon shader using micro polygon displacement and just three noise textures. So without further ado, let's head straight into Blender. So first things first, we just delete the default cube, then shift A to add a plane. Type in S5 to scale it by five. Next, we have to make sure we're using cycles and the experimental feature set, so that when we add our subdivision modifier, we will be able to activate adaptive subdivision. So then, click the checkbox and turn it into simple, so it stays a plane. All right, now let's add a new material. To do that, let's find our way into the shader editor and then press new. Press shift A and S to search for the displacement node, add it to the node tree and then connect it up. Anything connected into this node will determine the final displacement of our plane. So first, add a Moosegrave node. Control shift click it using the node wrangler anon to see what we are doing. Then connect a Voronoi texture in between. And finally, another Moosegrave texture. Okay, so right now this doesn't look very much like a canyon texture. So you will have to copy the values I enter right now into your own shader. But feel free to play around with these values to your liking. After all, this is how I came up with these values. I was just playing around with some nodes and then suddenly there was a canyon. Okay, we need one final step to make our displacement working. So head into your material properties down here and turn on displacement and bump. Now reconnect your principal shader and in order to see stuff, let's add a sun lamp to our scene. You can also press Ctrl B to limit the render size if you are worried about your PC catching fire. We can enhance our shader a little bit by adding a mapping node. Select the first Bootgrave texture and press Ctrl T to add the mapping node with the node wrangler add-on. With this node we can control the scale and the location of our canyon. After adjusting the scale in the mapping node, make sure to adjust the scale in the displacement node as well. So technically now we have more than three nodes, but at the core it's still just the three noise textures that make the canyon, so just cut me some slack already. You can use the location input from your mapping node to search for an area that you find visually pleasing. Also you can use the Z component as a kind of seed value to explore even more shapes. But be aware, this can be very addicting and you might find yourself sliding these locations around for many hours. I will increase the sun strength to three so when we add the colors, we can see things better. To colorize our canyon, connect the output of our last Moosegrave texture to the base color input of our principal shader. In between, we will fit another noise texture, because more procedural textures equals better. As you can see, this will create these colorful bands all over the canyon. We will use the king of all nodes, the color ramp node, to give these bands our desired color values. Just drop the color ramp in between here and then fiddle around with the sliders. You can give individual sliders different colors and values and then shift them around and see what works for you. Just take your time here and have some fun. If your shader looks kind of wet, just crank up the roughness value. All right, guys, and this is it, our final result. An easy to use, completely procedural canyon shader using just three noise textures. Okay, technically four. To make things a little bit easier for you guys, I took the shader we created earlier and turned it into an entire node group and added a whole bunch of nodes to give you more control over the look and feel of your canyon. You can download this shader for free from my Gumroad store. It's called the Valley Shader. Here you can download the blend file containing the shader and the pre-made scene. So let's take a look. As you can see, we have our plane and our sun lamp. If we head into the viewport shading mode, you can see everything is pre-made and set up. To our left is our shader node group. Here you have a whole bunch of controls exposed. For example, you can shift around the location quite easily or adjust the scale. Also, there is a slider for the sediment layers, which corresponds to these little uh, ridges that form all over the place. So if we lower this value, we can see that there aren't so much of these ridges forming 
and higher values mean lots of bridges. To colorize our canyon, we have to head inside the node group. So select the group, press tab to enter it, and then navigate to the purple area, which is the colorization area. On the bottom, you can find the area which corresponds to the color of the walls. So let's maybe turn this into a darkish, bluish, grayish color. And on top is the coloring that is not the walls. So for example, I can make this snowy material and just like that, we turned this desert canyon into a mountain range in the winter time. Also, we have the option to connect our color ramp up here to give us even greater control over all the little values. If you like what I do and want to support me and my coffee addiction, please feel free to grab the Valley Supporter Pack. This pack contains a whole bunch of pre-made scenes like this one or this one, contains animation files and also a whole bunch of pre-made materials. Also, be sure to like this video so the algorithm shows this video to a whole bunch of other Blender users so they can make their own canyon shaders. I have an Instagram page where I post my artworks and also a Twitter page where I show recent work in progress. If you use the valley shader, I would love to see what you came up with. So please feel free to tag me or drop a DM if you used it and show me your works. I would love to see them. All right, that's it from me, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have an amazing day and see you next time.